there was a meeting at Honda between the designers and management. Good morning YouTube, this is Cruise Man. Welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel. The channel for everything Honda Goldwing. If you love the Goldwing or you're passionate about motorcycling in general, you're in the right place. I'd appreciate it if you click on that little subscribe button down below. And if you click on the bell icon, YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. Well, we're back from Wingding. Had a nice uh, ride out from Dallas-Fort Worth to Nashville and back. Got to do some interesting uh, off-road adventures. For those of you who watched my last motor vlog, you saw the uh, little dirt road uh, detour that we got to take, thanks to uh, Mr. Garman. And you know, I, I want to point out, I, I'm still a pretty firm believer in the Garmin GPS. I think it's the best GPS system for the Goldwing, much better than the built-in GPS. But you have to take everything a GPS tells you with a grain of salt. They don't always give you what you want as far as directions. As I have learned in the past, and the last two wingdings, I got diverted uh, last year uh, at Wingding 40, somewhere in Mississippi, I got diverted onto a gravel road. And it was really fun, let me tell you. Fortunately, I didn't have a passenger, I just, but I was pulling the trailer. Some of you in the comments asked me, why didn't you just turn around when I got in this dirt road? Well, there really wasn't anywhere to turn around uh, with a trailer. And even if it were possible to turn around, it would probably take a long time to do it. And I ne you never know if there's going to be traffic coming the other direction. So you don't want to tie up that whole road. I mean, it's just, it's just not as easy as it looks. And those inclines and declines were much, much steeper than what they look like on the GoPro. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that little adventure. But overall, the bike performed very well. I had no trouble pulling the trailer with a passenger. It's the first time I had done a road trip pulling the trailer and the with a passenger on board. Now together, uh, let's see, I weigh about 185 pounds. Ricky probably weighs maybe 120 pounds. So total, you know, total weight on the bike was maybe 300 pounds. Plus, you know, some luggage in the luggage, you know, saddlebags and trunk. And then the trailer, I imagine we had about 100 to 150 pounds worth of stuff in the trailer. I think the trailer weighs 150 or 175 by itself. So, you know, the bike just chugged right along, pulled it fine. I did have to use tour mode because the, tra uh, the bike doesn't really have enough muscle in econ or rain mode to pull a trailer so you really need that additional torque and that additional power uh, when you're pulling a trailer i also had my suspension settings to the maximum preload with pale with passenger and luggage and uh, didn't really have any trouble at all with the suspension everything worked fine uh, it was pretty comfortable. Um, the seat, even though it has been rebuilt by Wingsoft, by John down in Bryan College Station, and it is a massive improvement over the stock seat. I'd say it's, I'd say it's still only about 75 to 80% as comfortable as the seat was on my 2012 Goldwing. So that meant we had to get off and walk around a little more. Now, Ricky didn't have any trouble with her seat. She loved the passenger seat. She didn't complain one time. And trust me, if she didn't like it, she would have said something. So 
Ricky was good with the passenger seat, but I get a little discomfort on the insides of my legs up high uh, with this uh, Goldwing seat. Now, without the Wingsoft upgrade, I would say that the Goldwing seat, the stock 2018 plus Goldwing seat is maybe 50% as comfortable as the 2012 was. But, so you get about a 50% increase in comfort with that Wingsoft upgrade. And I think, you know, it was definitely well worth it. You know, touring with a passenger, the only real shortcoming I had with the bike uh, goes back to something we've talked about many, many times, and that is the, the trunk. It's just inconvenient because when I'm by myself, I can manage to get my helmet in the trunk. I have to take off my Bluetooth communicator, my Cardo, but I can lay it down on its side and get it in the trunk. And I tried everything I could. I turned these two helmets every way possible, and there's no way I could get my IS Max 2 and her Arai helmet into the trunk at the same time. So that meant we had to use lid locks a couple of times. Uh, a couple of times we had to carry the helmet inside the restaurant or wherever we were going with us. You know, it, it, it just made it less convenient. And it brings you back to the old, you know, the same thing we've talked about many times. What the heck was Honda thinking when they put this design to this smaller trunk? Well, there was a meeting at Honda between the designers and management. And uh, thanks to Cruise Man's Garage, I just happened to have a video camera in that meeting. So you're gonna be able to find out what nobody else has found out so far, and that is why Honda went with the smaller trunk. Some of us from the design and marketing team, we really think going with this smaller trunk on the new Goldwing is a mistake. We just feel like these American buyers are gonna want the bigger trunk. How many times do we have to go over this? I've already told you we're going with the smaller trunk design. But the American buyer, they're big. They have big passengers. They have a lot of stuff. They got big heads. Some of them wear double X, triple X size full face helmets. And we've tried everything we've tried. We cannot fit two full face extra large helmets in that trunk. It's, it's impossible. You don't understand. We're not going after the typical traditional gold wing buyer. We're going after the small American. He's thin. He's frail. He may be starving to death. That's who we want. But where are they going to put all their stuff when they're on a tour, when they're riding around the country? Where are they going to put their stuff? We've given them that little side pocket. You could easily fit a, a small map and maybe a, a pin in there. And plus, what about the center pocket? You know, you can easily put a cell phone and maybe a, a little flashlight in there. And all Americans care about is their cell phone anyway, as long as we give them a place to put it. Uh, yeah, and, and about that, center pocket, it gets so hot, it causes problems with the cell phone. They can actually shut down. Go find a little 25 cent piece of foam rubber and put it in the center pocket. That will solve the problem. They'll be more than happy with that. Have you seen the new Yamaha Venture? They just came out with this new touring bike. They kind of beat us to the punch. They got out there first it's got this, this massive trunk. It's, it's huge. You could, you could literally fit a small family in that trunk. Exactly. A small family of illegal aliens that you're going to smuggle across the border into America. Honda's not into human trafficking. Is that what you want us to do? Do you want us to be the human trafficking motorcycle company? Listen, for the last time, we just think it's a mistake. We think we think we should go with a larger trunk. We've designed one that's just a half an inch bigger all the way around, and it doesn't affect the looks of the bike. We can build a larger trunk for this bike and everybody will be happy. Maybe you're not Honda material. Maybe you should go to work 
for Yamaha, the human trafficking motorcycle company. Well, there you have it. Now you know why Honda management went and insisted on the smaller trunk for the Honda Goldwing. So anyway, if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. More videos coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends about Cruise Man's Garage. Motive logs, DIY tips, hacks, and those accessory installation and review videos. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time on Cruise Man's Motive Logs.